All right, back one more time. Michael Zoll here doing a video tutorial series for West Side Electronic Music. And this is the final installment of our series on Wise to Unity integration. This is part nine, and we're going to be working on optimization of our audio assets. So, uh, you know, optimization, uh, fitting as much as we can into as little data as we can is a big deal in the gaming world. You know, um, particularly for something that's delivered on a console format, you're only going to have so much space on the on the media that it's delivered on, you know, say like a Blu-ray disc for like, you know, a console, PS4, Xbox One, something like that. And there's only so much stuff that can fit on there. And the rest of the game is going to take up, you know, the, the graphics design is going to take up, you know, a ton of the room on that disc. So you're going to have to optimize your assets to be able to stay within budget that is allocated to you, uh, you know, by the game developer. So in this instance, little scenario might be, hey, uh, this is a pretty small game, and uh, I'm only going to give you 10 megabytes to be able to fit all of your game assets onto, all of your sound design onto for this game. And you can see <clears throat> here in our data sizes for our sound banks, um, even just our ambient sound bank alone would be close to double that. You know, this is in bytes, and... Uh, you know, one million re represents you know roughly close to you know a megabyte. So this would be you know eight, you know eighteen and a half megabytes just on its own. And so we're going to need to compress this down to get all of our sound all of our sound design within that ten megabyte budget that we've been given. So we haven't seen these red uh, highlighted names here before, and that's because we've never set a max size uh, for our sound banks in the sound bank manager. And I've gone ahead, gone ahead and done that. Uh, you know, just roughly said, oh, I want you know my ambient sound bank to be, you know, five megs, five million bytes. Um, we'll give you know a half a meg to the footsteps and another, um, you know, fifth of a meg, you know, to the voiceover that we have so far, and that will get us well under budget and give us some room to add more stuff if we needed to, you know, as we continue to design this game. So. Yeah, so we're way over budget right now. We need to fix that. How are we going to do that? Well, I'll show you. So this is another area of the game where you can use share sets. Um, you can create your own conversion settings if you like. And um, just a quick little deal with that. You know, create a new conversion setting in your default work unit. Viking Village conversion. And we can create our own. You can see all of our settings here, um, sample rates, minimum, maximum, format, pulse code modulation like a WAV file, adaptive di differential pulse code modulation, kind of like a variable bit rate PCM, and then uh, AUG, uh, AUG Vorbis, which is uh, supposed to be a lossless compression format. And that's the one that we're going to use, and we won't use our own uh, custom one for the purposes of this video. We'll just do kind of a blanket conversion here all of our audio assets and that gives me an opportunity to also all show to also show you the multi-edit feature so instead of having to go in here and uh, go back to my design view go into my conversion settings for each container or you know actor mixer um, and you know selecting factory conversion settings for us quality high don't have to do that uh, I can select all of these containers and objects within this work unit, right click, multi-edit, and uh, all sorts of stuff that I can do in the multi-edit. And here we're going to use it for conversion settings. And we'll select one of the factory conversion settings that are available. Go down to our Vorbis, AUG Vorbis, uh, Vorbis Quality High. And we'll just go ahead and hit OK on that. And you can see now that we go to each one of these, it's an uh, has the uh, conversion setting applied to that container or object. All right, so back over into our sound bank manager. 
still red because we haven't generated yet. We need to generate with those conversion settings to check against the budget that we set for ourselves. So we'll go ahead and do that. And bang, way under budget. Looking good. Uh, no errors. Everything's good to go. So let's check out how this sounds uh, in our Unity project. Uh, make sure nothing sounds like crap uh, by converting it over to the Aug Vorbis format. All right, so we fired this up. And uh, I'm just listening to this on my Logitech G930 headset. So I probably couldn't hear a huge difference in this anyway. But yeah, this is all compressed audio and uh, sounds pretty damn good. On my headset, I really can't tell a difference at all. Yeah, sounds fantastic. And we've come in way under budget uh, from what our game developer you know, allowed us to use. And uh, that's going to make him happy. And making our employer happy is, uh, is a good thing. Oh, I forgot about our little castle here in our reverb zone. Ooh, reverb. But I digress. So that's going to do it for this video tutorial series. Thanks a bunch for sticking it out. I know it was quite a bit of material. But uh, hopefully uh, working within WISE will you know, help to spur your creativity to you know, get something going and, uh, and integrate it into a Unity project and uh, just uh, have a lot of fun and do a great job. And uh, just a couple things before I go. Uh, one thing I would suggest you do as well is to get the uh, go to the WISE website and get the tutorial PDF and demo projects that are available uh, on the WISE website. They were created by CRAS, the Conservatory for Recording Arts and Sciences. And uh, it's a very good tutorial series. covers some concepts that we did not cover in this series. Um, you know, no videos though. It's just a PDF document, and then uh, you know, but it guides you through the demo projects, kind of like a little Quake project, uh, you know, Quake or Doom style first-person shooter, and you get to do uh, some sound design for that. Pretty fun and um, very informative. And lastly. Uh, you know, this, uh, all these concepts that I covered and all these tools and everything, you know, within WISE and Unity, you know, just like in working with your digital audio workstation, you know, at first you want to you wanna know, uh, you know, how do I compress my kick drum or what's the right compression for voiceover? You know, what are the settings? Well, you know, those are good starting points, but the most important thing is to learn your tools and how you can sculpt your audio using those tools. So learn your tools and the parameters of those tools and how they will affect the audio. And once you know your tools really well and what it will do, uh, what each, uh, what each um, facet of those tools you know, will do to the audio, then you can you know, really get into you know, being creative and doing whatever you want with your audio. So this, is just a, this whole series was just a general walkthrough of you know, some of the tools you can use and now it's up to you to expand on that and you know, learn how they're going to work for you and uh, how you can integrate them into your sound design process. So uh, thanks again for watching. I had a lot of fun. Um, I know I can be long-winded sometimes, so uh, thanks for sticking it out. And uh, have a lot of fun with your sound design. And All right.